There's a lot of industry buzz around Wi-Fi 6, but is it worth it and should we upgrade to Wi-Fi 6? But first of all, we need to understand where did Wi-Fi 6 even come from? Because I don't know about you, but I never even heard of Wi-Fi 5. How did I miss that? See, we used to call Wi-Fi according to the IEEE specification that drawed exactly how it worked. So that specification is known as 802.11. And a long time ago, we had 802.11, the original, and then we started modifying it. We had 802.11a and b and g and n. And then we ran out of single letters to use, and so now we had to use two letters. We had 802.11ac and now 802.11ax. But the Wi-Fi Alliance got smart and said, nobody really knows what 802.11ax is going to be, so let's call that Wi-Fi 6. Let's talk about what Wi-Fi 6 can really bring to the table. And there are three different things we're going to talk about. The first of which is security. Wi-Fi 6 mandates the use of Wi-Fi Protected Access 3, otherwise known as WPA3. A long time ago, we had WPA1, and then we had WPA2, and we've used WPA2 for a long time, for a very, very long time at this point, and there are some weaknesses that have come about. Now, WPA3 was compatible with Wi-Fi 5, but it wasn't required to be supported on Wi-Fi 5 devices. Well, now, if you have a device that is supporting Wi-Fi 6, it must, by definition, support WPA3. Now second, something that's truly new that Wi-Fi 6 brings to the table is the concept of multi-user orthogonal frequency division multiple access. That would be MU-OFDMA. The big deal about MU-OFDMA is that we can take a channel now and break it down into individual components that we call resource units, or RUs. And we can assign those resource units to individual users, thereby improving the performance of that user when they're in a crowd. But here's a very important note about this technology. It is not backwards compatible. We cannot use this technology with Wi-Fi 5 devices even if the access point is Wi-Fi 6. Now the third advantage I want to discuss is this concept that we call Wi-Fi 6E. Yeah, it almost seems like we've already got a new standard called Wi-Fi 6E that we're bringing to the table, and in a way we are. But what's happening here is really, really cool. A long time ago with the early Wi-Fi's, we were bound to the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. It wasn't a very large spectrum, it's why it's 2.4, it was truly part of the two gig spectrum, if you want to think of it like that. And so there wasn't a whole lot of room in the spectrum, there's a lot of interference. Then we got access to the five gig spectrum. But the five gig spectrum, it's not totally open. In fact, there's a lot of rules and laws and regulatory practices around which channels we can and can't use. Now Wi-Fi 6 is still built on the five gig spectrum. But Wi-Fi 6E is built on the newly accessible 6 gigahertz spectrum. This is super exciting. The 6 gigahertz spectrum is going to bring us 14 new 80 megahertz channels and 760 megahertz channels on top of that. That's going to vastly improve our throughput capabilities by allowing our clients to move into this space and allow us to deploy a lot more 160 megahertz channels. But as far as the 6 gig spectrum is concerned, if we want to take advantage of that, we absolutely have to buy devices that are certified as Wi-Fi 6E. Don't go out and buy Wi-Fi 6 devices and expect to have access to the 6 gigahertz spectrum. So for now, we might want to hold back our purchases and wait to make sure that we are going to get those Wi-Fi 6E devices that we desire. So let's sum this conversation up because the whole purpose of this discussion was to figure out, is it worth it to move to Wi-Fi 6? So let's look at some of the advantages. First of all, speed. We are going to see some speed increases with Wi-Fi 6, but the question is, do we need that speed increase? Because we saw some incredible Wi-Fi speeds increases over time between Wi-Fi's, you know, the first three, that was 54 meg per second, and now Wi-Fi 4 comes out and it promises up to 600 megabits per second. That's more than a 10 times increase. That was huge. And then Wi-Fi 5 came out and it promised up to seven gigabits per second. Once again, more than 10X speed going from four to five. So now we have Wi-Fi 6 coming out and pressure's on, right? How fast is this going to be? 70, 80, 100 gigabit per second? And the answer is 9.6. Now, if you're scratching your head saying, wait a second, Jeff, that's not what I was expecting. Well, yeah, none of us were. It, it didn't sound like a whole lot of speed because it's not a whole lot of speed increase. Wi-Fi 6 is the first Wi-Fi standard to come out that didn't focus on a speed increase. It was focused instead on making sure that we can deliver Wi-Fi in some of these environments that we're building that have high densities, lots of clients, lots of people trying to use Wi-Fi because the number of Wi-Fi clients over the last 10 years has only continued to grow exponentially. 
So if you're managing a sports stadium, uh, Wi-Fi 6 is probably going to be something you'd want to consider because you're going to have tens of thousands of people trying to be on the Wi-Fi at once. But if you're talking about deploying this into your home environment, chances are you don't need the high density throughputs that Wi-Fi 6 is going to bring to the table. And furthermore, regardless of your situation, remember that most of those advantages only come when all of the clients are Wi-Fi 6 enabled. So sure, deploy the infrastructure, but don't necessarily expect the benefits are going to come right away. And lastly is security. Now security probably should have been first because security is super important to us in the networking space. But understanding that we already do have WPA3 on Wi-Fi 5, it tells us that it's not mission critical that we upgrade to Wi-Fi 6 for that. But at the same time, we might find that Wi-Fi 5 devices that don't support WPA3 are stopping us from actually making the migration that we want to make. So is Wi-Fi 6 worth it? The answer is it depends. I hate to get to the end of a video and give you that answer, but at the same time, it's going to depend on your individual networking needs. But I can tell you that unlike the leap to Wi-Fi 4 and Wi-Fi 5, the benefits of Wi-Fi 6 are going to take us a while to realize. So I think the best answer is even if it doesn't make sense for your organization to immediately upgrade to Wi-Fi 6, start the process. Make sure the clients you purchase support Wi-Fi 6. Make sure any new access points and wireless routers that you purchase support Wi-Fi 6. Doing so will ensure that we are paving the way towards a bright future powered by Wi-Fi 6.